Welcome back to the American Diabetes Association 74th Scientific Sessions. I'm Rhonda Anderson at the Moscone Center in San Francisco with another breaking news update. Do walkable neighborhoods reduce obesity and diabetes? That's a question we tackle today here at the Scientific Sessions. According to a pair of Canadian studies, people who live in neighborhoods that are pedestrian friendly experienced a much lower rate of obesity, overweight, and diabetes than those who lived in neighborhoods more dependent on cars. What makes the place walkable? Well, we're talking about neighborhoods with less sprawl, more interconnectivity among streets, and more local stores and services within walking distance. One study compared adults living in the most and least walkable metropolitan areas in suburban Ontario and found a lower risk of developing diabetes over a 10-year period for those who lived in the more walkable neighborhoods, 13% on average. However, this was only true for those who were younger and middle aged People 65 or older saw no preventive benefit from living in a walkable neighborhood. A second study comparing neighborhoods, not individuals, found that the most walkable neighborhoods had the lowest rate of obesity, diabetes, and overweight. The researchers also noted that people who lived in the most walkable neighborhoods were three times more likely to walk or bicycle and half as likely to drive as a means of transportation. One thing to note, these researchers looked at people diagnosed with all types of diabetes at age 30 or older. So where do we go from here? How we build our cities really matters in terms of our overall health. When you live in a neighborhood designed to encourage people to be more active, you are more likely to be active. Every opportunity to walk, to get outside, to go to the corner store, or walk your children to school can have a big impact on our risk for diabetes and becoming overweight. Solving the obesity pandemic will require both individual strategies and policy changes. So here is one piece of a puzzle that we as a society, society can potentially do something good. While the studies took place in Canada, the findings certainly can be applied to its neighbor, the United States. To view this press release in its entirety, visit the newsroom section of diabetes.org. And for more continued updates, breaking news, and highlights from the 74th Scientific Sessions, visit diabetes.org slash breaking news. I'm Rhonda Anderson in San Francisco.